Hey, um, I just finished through hiking the Arizona Trail and want to share what was in my pack uh, by the end of it. So to start, I'm just going to start with what I had on every day. This is a tank top. I got it free at a cl friend clothing swap, but it's um, Patagonia. And then this is just a St. Vinny's, um, what do you call it, button up that I wore every day. You can see this is how it was when I bought it. And this is the color now because of the sun. Um, anyway, I, yeah, I basically wore this for sun um, protection and it's so thin that, you know, the breeze would go through or I could dip it in a creek and um, to cool off and it would dry out real fast. Um, so since this was all exposed and I actually have a scar here that I need to be careful about for sun protection, I'd wear um, one bandana like this and then for the rest of me, a bandana like this with a baseball cap and so that gets the back of the neck the ears and I had sunscreen for my face and um, I often wasn't wasn't wearing these leggings and I do my legs and I had um, just some gloves a friend gave me just the running gloves that I wore the first couple days for the cold and then I ended up uh, wearing them every day for sun protection and it was just nice you know when you're digging a cat hole or whatever you're doing that it I think kept my hands a little cleaner um, and then I had never worn gaiters before but I got a pair of dirty girl gaiters and they were fantastic. If you're new to these, I'll just show you. You just slip it around your ankle, and then these are my shoes. They're just um, running shoes, just regular, nothing special running shoes. Um, then you put on your shoe. And um, there's a little uh, metal hook here at the end that you slip on the front of your shoe. And then the back, you're actually supposed to, um, I super glued Vel the other half of Velcro to the back of my, to the back of my shoe, but it fell off like on day one, <laughs> but it was still helpful. So it just, um, You know, it keeps rocks and sand from getting um, in between, for getting into your shoe. And, you know, when there was, when you're hiking through snow, it was really helpful too, in keeping that out. Um, yeah, I was just amazed at the end of the day how there would be nothing to dump out of my shoe. Nothing. Um, so I highly recommend gaiters. Um, and these are dirty girl gaiters that I had. Um, these are, then I would hike with um, hiking poles. It's gossamer gear because um, I have a gossamer gear tent and these also held up my tent. But this is what I had on me uh, every day and now we'll uh, go into the pack. A pack I would in the morning, but beforehand something that's already in there. So this is a, um, ULA Ohm 2.0 bag and there's this little red pouch that's attached to the inside and this was my like med kit um, so I'll show you real quick the things I had in here uh, menstrual cup um, my thermal rest uh, field repair kit that I had um, later on I bought tent Tape, which I needed the first week and ended up borrowing from somebody, but now I have my own. Um, moleskin, because I owned it already. Ended up not having any poop problems. Um, these antibacterial wipes, which I never even opened, so I don't know 
with them, but you know, had I had a worse injury than anything. And then this was my, I mean, little measly med kit. I wouldn't necessarily recommend. You do you. I had a bunch of band-aids, um, three cough drops, and six, I, six ibuprofen, and I had one um, early on, and then earplugs, <laughs> and um, and my nail clippers. I also kept in this. That's what's in there. Then I did have, um, I used a bag liner when I got all my Gossamer gear stuff that had a sale. So everything goes inside of it. There's um, my sleeping bag. This is, oh, what's it called? Angel Fire. I think it's Marmot. I usually couldn't get it all the way in because I have a, um, a liner from uh, REI that adds 15 degrees, so I think that um, adds a little bulk to it, but I really loved having a liner. That way, um, you know, you're gross and smelly and you can wash the liner if you're washing. I did it once and flat. Be warm. So then um, on the two sides, I put this is my tent. Um, like I said, I it's gossamer gear because it goes with these holded up. It's called the one, um, and I have a little uh, what do you call it? Ground sheet. Um, or as I used to call it, saran wrap, but it's it's uh, really surprisingly durable. Uh, but I just keep it with my tent. So that goes alongside. And then um, this is a thermal rest, thermal rest um, air mattress. It's the uh, lightweight <laughs> they're ultra light one it's yellow and that goes inside and I'm always careful you know there's lots of um, prickly things in the desert so super careful to not not puncture that and so I also have a, a lightweight mat um, that I put on the floor of my tent for the purpose of protecting that mattress. And this I would put in here, on the side. That one's the best. Uh, and I just put two um, like that. And I have a packing cube, a small one, and this had um, my other pair of socks. I have two pairs of socks. That was another pair of socks. My second underwear and I use these cloth liners so one of each and a clean um, shirt short sleeve and then a really small lightweight long sleeve which I didn't I didn't wear that much but it was nice to have one clean when I did it kept me warm it's nice to have one clean thing on. So that I would shove down over the um, air mattress because it's shorter. And then I have a Patagonia um, Huff. This thing is old. It's like, I think I've had it over five years. It's ripped up. And so I was glad to take it along because I didn't have to worry about it getting beat up. The zipper broke my final week of the hike, um, and that's fine. It, it kept warm. So then this, I'll, inside the plastic, shut it down. Um, 
and then I would kind of fold over, fold over the plastic to close that up. And the next thing, oh, I'm gonna keep these closed. So I had um, a hat, me, and then a, a buff, um, which I'd put on and off as needed by the weather. And these two, I'd usually, if I wasn't wearing them, they'd be in the bottom of this, or top, I mean, depending on, of this uh, outer pocket. And then um, for a chunk of the hike, I had this layer also. I sent it to Flagstaff in Patagonia because I hadn't worn it. And then in the final two weeks, I wore it more, but I, you know, I could have just gone with um, that long sleeve V. One or the other, but during the last two weeks, that was shoved inside as well. Um, this was my P rag, which I kept flipped. Um, I actually had a clothespin for the first like six weeks, and then um, my last chunk of maps, I had this. I had them in a binder clip because I thought that was because my my clothespin broke. Imagine that. Um, so that just hangs on. Here, which is where I would also hang, you know, like wet socks or things I had washed, um, hang them to dry. Okay, next step. Okay, so then on top of the bag, um, like I said, put my fuel. Um, and then a combination of, I'll show you my, this is my cook set then, so I have a wooden bamboo spoon because I already owned it I would not go out and buy anything um, this is a what do you call it tokes tokes um, little pot here um, I think it's 750 milliliters yeah uh, that was nice lightweight Um, inside I have uh, the Talenti, I never had it, but these jars are fantastic. They're really fun to close. And uh, um, this is where I would, if I had pasta or rice for dinner at lunch, I would pre-soak it, put everything in here. And like I said, a really, it's a really tight um, close and then it could soak in there all day. I basically only ever, this heating up water in here. Um, I'll do a whole other post on food <clears throat> and get specific about cooking. But um, and then this is my little pocket rocket MSR stove. If you've never seen one, it opens like this, like this, like this, and you just. it and then on top of there and then and then the top one so so I usually kept once I started soaking food in here um, I would keep it empty if it was not in use because to keep it clean but at the beginning of the hike my stove right inside and then um, I had a lighter and matches in a zippy and those fit right in there too and then because the lid this lid doesn't lock or anything it would just you know, tip and it's gonna fall right off um, what I would do is I'd put this then upside down into this bag that it came with um, and that way I'm not going to lose my lid. So, um, that was my cooking system. And depending on whether I was soaking something and wanted to keep it upright, maybe I would put this directly in the bag. Otherwise, um, it lived in this, which ended up being one of my two bags. I brought this um, along kind of randomly. It's... 20 liters I don't know super um, it compacts down into this little pouch 
whole bag, but I ended up using it every day. It was usually full, so I'd keep my, um, what are these, napkins and toilet paper. My trash bag would be in here. Um, the f my food for the day. Lots of other smellies um, would be in here. Then I had this See the Summit dry bag, which was, it's a 13 liter bag, and after a resupply that would be totally full with food, um, over spill into this one. And so that's where I would store my food. And then these guys would go on top here. And the other thing on top was my um, water filtering. This is bag ended up looking like um, I had a Sawyer squeeze. So with that, you have the filter element. Uh, this is for cleaning for backwashing, which I hadn't heard of but basically you need clean water, filtered water. You pull some into here and then you take off the cap on the, this is the clean side. Sorry, I still got water in here. <laughs> and then you go like this and then you shove it through and so dirty stuff is gonna come out the dirty side. Um, so I did bring that with me and I did use it a few times throughout the two months um, because otherwise I wouldn't put it in the filter. Um, I had several bags. My main problem with the Sawyer was that my bags got a hole right um, here and here. So they sent, they, um, Sent me a replacement, which I've, I had bought a second set on trail. It's a long story. Um, it works. Just don't forget to sleep with this if it's, you know, cold at all. I kind of near the end got in the habit. I would just zip it. There's a little pouch inside my sleeping bag. I would just put it there every night because if you forget, um, then you then it freezes and you're out of the you can't filter water. Um, I also kept, once I switched out bottles, I used, um, two Gatorade bottles, which I stored here and here, and then two Smart water bottles, which clip on the, um, I'll show you, I have one right here. They snap right into the handles. So I had two smart water bottles there. So anyway, I kept, when I re replaced, I replaced one of these when I was in town just to get a newer, just getting kind of beat up. And so I just kept an old cap and then later in Flagstaff, I got an, another Gatorade. So I kept an old cap um, in here in case, you know, it's windy, one goes flying, you're not. And then my aqua mirror I kept in here too. Um, I made the mistake of buying, what is this, like the two ounce, which um, I learned mid hike when I needed it, that there's no dropper. It's the two ounce bottles are poor. It's so like the, the smallest, um, the smallest amounts it gives you for mixing is you know, for two and a half, for two and a half gallons, for 9.5 liters, put in a half tablespoon of A and a half tablespoon of B. And I was like, all right. So anyway, get the, get the one ounce, <laughs> get the one ounce bottles with the dropper. You'll be happy. Um, and then I have some, uh, 
um, it's just Sea of Summit wash soap. I had a small bar um, of burners to start with, but um, then I ended up going with this, and it did it did leak. That's why it's in a second plastic bag, you know, changing temperature and whatnot. Um, so that all lived here in this bag, which I keep near the top um, so that I could grab it when I needed to filter throughout the day. And since I liked to go long hauls with like long or bigger stretches of food, uh, eight or nine days, often I couldn't, this thing would be spilling over and like, there's a strap here that that stretches over and it'll snap right here in front. But usually for the first three or four days after a refill, even if it was all the way, I couldn't I couldn't snap it, so it would just would hang there. Um alright. So that's the inside of the bag. Uh next is gonna be this pocket. Okay, so in this outer pocket is where I kept my rain gear. Um, I had another, these packing cubes I already owned um, for many years. They were super useful and they were also useful on the hike. So this one was the great size for my rain gear. I have um, pants. They're just normal from Cabela's and these were actually really nice because I'd usually stay in shorts without the leggings and at the end of the day when the sun would go down at camp I get cold easily if there's you know not sun I'm cold so I would um, throw these on when I'd be sitting on my tent and then you can you know kneel and everything and get dirty and you got nice um, protection and so they're good for warmth and then you know when it did rain Hail. Uh, I had those two, and then I did bring along in the end my nice. Um, I have a nice REI um, jacket I got on clearance the sale a few years ago, and again when it rained, it was nice to have. And so these just fold. They fold it nice. pack and then this lived all the time in here okay. and usually it would already be in there when I packed the body of it so I wouldn't have had that struggle um, I brought with me a Lucy light and then I also brought with me a headlamp. Um, I, I don't know when, maybe five weeks in, I like switched from using this to using this. I didn't really need both, but you know, if you run out of solar or when this would, when this guy would need charging, then you don't have light. This in this bag, which I shoved in here, and this I also just kind of kept in here so that if I'd stop and there was great sun, I could just pull it out, set it down, and let it charge for a bit. Um, I kept a journal, and then my um, papers, you know, maps, and my water water source printout in this big zippy, which I also put right in here. Um, and then I had, because I already owned it, I brought with me this solar charger, it's a Nomad 7, um, it has this battery pack thing that comes with it that you can charge, and I would use this to charge my phone, iPhone 5, and since <laughs> there wasn't space inside the rest of my pack, um, 
uh, most days, or it just basically lived here. I'll show you. Then I would carry me at the bottom of it to make these. Um, these guys are meant, these loops are meant to keep your checking poles, but I always was using my checking poles and if I wasn't there, my tent. So um, that's where this guy lived. And um, the last, yeah, so my electronics, it was the only other thing. I don't think I've, I'd had my iPhone 5, a charger cord, a little block, which I'd keep in, in the back of this. Um, and, oh, here they are, and um, an iPod uh, mini for podcasts and music, and then headphones. And, and the last thing was I had a tiny little half zippy like this with um, credit card, debit card, some cash, my license. And yeah, that was that was my wallet for two weeks. Um, I think, and that's everything I had. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm gonna um, write a post about this if you like seeing things in writing better, and I'll make more posts about my food because I um, eat mostly vegan, you could say. Uh, 